Good morning. God bless you. Pastor Juan Felix here in, Un in United with Christ. Today we are going to be speaking about repentance from dead works. Stay tuned. You're going to be blessed. United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning. God bless you. It is a wonderful day. I want to bless everybody this morning, and I want to thank everybody this morning for tuning in. My name is Pastor Juan Felix. This is your friend and Pastor Juan Felix from House of Purpose Church in 11-220 Rojas Drive here in El Paso, Texas. Before we get started, I would like to remind everybody that we do have a prayer line actively going right now. You can call at 915-532-8518. Here with United with Christ, somebody is ready to pick up the phone for your prayer request. Again, this is Pastor Juan Felix. I have a very uh, an interesting topic this morning that God has been putting in my heart, and I know that I was blessed, and I know that you are going to be blessed. I am privileged this morning to be joined with our co-pastor, Pastor, Pastor uh, Sam Quijas. Blessings, Pastor. Blessings. It's good to be here. Uh, I'm excited for the topics. I'm excited for what we're going to learn today, what we're going to talk about today. It's very important. It's very important what we're going to talk about. So I'm excited, and it's an honor to be here and to share it with you all. Amen. Why don't we start in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. And I know that, that, that these are, are interesting topics. I know that these are important topics. And sometimes there are, 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 are difficult topics to sometimes even speak about. But I know uh, that, that God is going to bless us this morning from Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, 2, and 3. It reads as follows. Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works. Here's where I want to start, Pastor. Not laying again a foundation, number one, repentance from dead works and a faith towards God and of instruction about washings, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. Here is a topic for this morning that I want to focus on. Uh, this is what the author of Hebrews writes that is the elementary, that is the principal thing, right? As uh, it, every human being, every person here in, in America, we start off going to school in elementary, mm -hmm. amen? And, and uh, this is how we are introduced to school, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a stage of elementary, and this is what the, the author of Hebrews says. This is the elementary thing for us Christians. Number one is repentance from dead works. What a topic. Mm -hmm. And I know it, it may be um, an intensive topic. It may be a difficult topic. But I want to address this this morning as God has laid this, laid this on my in my heart. Mm -hmm. So repentance of dead works. I want to start by, by talking. Again, this is what the author is speaking about, what is the principal thing. This is the foundation that has already been laid and we're not going to relay the foundation, according to the author. But the, every, every believer needs to understand, needs to be aware that our foundation, our principal foundation is one of them is the repentance from dead works. Amen. This is something that every believer uh, needed to hear um, upon entering the kingdom, upon mm -hmm. his repentance. This mm -hmm. is something from our, our childhood. From, from our beginning stages into the kingdom of God. So let's talk about, about these two words that are very important. Repentance, but repentance from dead works. So I want to start mm -hmm. with this very important word that every believer needs to understand. Repentance. Yes. Repentance is, is, is as, as we understand it, as us Christians understand it, repentance is not a single event um, in our lives. Rather, it is a continual event 
in the life of a Christian, right? Because we can say, I repented once, I accepted Christ once, and now I have no more need of repentance. And the reality is that we repent on a daily basis. We offend God on a daily basis. So we are not here saying that I have repented once and now I have no longer need of repentance. Rather, I continue to repent on a daily basis. That is, that is very important. It is. it is. We, us as Christians, us as followers of Christ, we constantly sin, knowingly, knowingly and unknowingly. Amen. So repentance is a huge, huge factor with us because we have to repent to God and ask for forgiveness. You know, a lot of people think that just like going to the altar, or going into church and just saying, God, forgive me of my one sin that I do, and I'm good. You know, no, no, that's not how it works. We must turn away from our repentance and seek God, but we must always ask for forgiveness. Because we're all, the repentance is the main, one of the main values that we have to keep doing in our Christian life, in Amen. our walk with Christ. Amen. That is so true. It, 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 scripture talks about two definitions of repentance. And, and, and these are very important um, definitions of repentance. The first definition that, that, that we learn from in Scripture is repentance as it refers to a feeling or an emotion. The other type of definition of repentance is a change of mind and a change of attitude. Mm -hmm. And that is the type of godly repentance. Because we can temporarily repent and have that be just a temporary emotion versus the repentance that God demands, which is a repentance that is a change of heart, that it's a change of attitude, and it is a change of direction. Mm -hmm. And this is what true repentance is all about, yes. right? As a matter of fact, when Peter, in Acts 2.38, when he speaks about repent and be baptized, mm -hmm. that word repentance is not talking about an emotion, mm -mm. but rather talking about three things, a change of mind, a change of attitude, and a change of direction. Mm -hmm. And that is what true repentance is. I think, I think we need to go back to that definition and make sure that we are aware that this is what repentance is. It's not an emotion, mm -hmm. but rather an action. Mm -hmm. I, I always tell all my church people, repentance is not a word, it is an action. Yep. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so that is that is very, very important. Amen? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Repentance is not... We have to turn away. Like the Bible says, repent in Acts 3, <clears throat> 19. It says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Amen. You know, we have to turn away. You know, it's a sense of direction. We can't keep just repenting and following in sin. Amen. We must turn away from sin. And continue following the Lord. And once we repent, you know, we must turn away. We can't just repent and continue the same thing we're doing, you know. Here's an interesting verse that I found about repentance. And, and it's, it, it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. And I want to read it for you this morning. Okay. It says, for having sorrow in a godly way. One version says, for having godly sorrow results in repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regrets. But the sorrow of the world produces death. Let me read that one more time. This is how important this is. For having sorrow in a godly way results in repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regrets. Part of repentance is having godly sorrow. Amen. And um, th there's this, this notion in church where it, they tell you, you shouldn't feel bad. The reality is that there is such a thing as godly sorrow. Mm -hmm. It is part of repentance. Notice, for having godly sorrow, in other words, I'm feeling sorry, it, it results in repentance that leads for salvation. So when we have the Spirit of God within us, amen, and, and we falter for X, Y, and C reason, there is something called godly sorrow that is within every single believer. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. In other words, uh, frankly speaking, we should feel bad yeah. when we offend God. Yes, of Amen? Yes. There is that conscience, there is that feeling that, that yes, we have offended God and we should feel bad. There is such a thing 
as godly sorrow. Mm -hmm. I think many people disconnect from that and, and now they have a cauterized mind where they no longer feel sorrow. They, there is no longer a hurt. There is no longer an emotion attached to this, this fault that I committed. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that there is such a thing as godly sorrow. Mm -hmm. And when we do falter, it is okay to feel bad because that, I believe, is a product of the spirit living within us. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is called godly sorrow. How important is that? That's very important because that causes us to not ask for forgiveness. Amen. You know, if we don't feel bad about it, if we don't feel the guilt about it, if we don't feel the shameness, the hurt that I'm offending God, then what forgiveness are we doing? What are we going to ask for forgiveness Amen. for if we don't feel that godly sorrow? So it's, it is a good thing. It is a good thing to feel that godly sorrow so you can ask for forgiveness from God. Because then what would you ask for? You would just blow by it like it's nothing, you know, and then you'll ask for other things that when that's affecting God as well, you know. So we have to have, we have to feel bad, you know. We have to Amen. feel ashamed, you know, and it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing because God lives in us, and we know we are offending God, you know. We don't live in the ways of the wicked, right. you know. We, we feel that this is, I'm not doing the right thing, you know. I must ask for forgiveness, you know. I, I did X, Y, and Z, and, you know, I'm so ashamed, you know. I need to ask for forgiveness because it gets to a point to where people, don't feel that shameless anymore, you know? Then they stop, for, they stop asking for forgiveness, and that's where sin continues. Amen. For having a sorrow in a godly way or godly sorrow results in repentance. That definition of this word repentance in this text, it means it's going to result in a change of mind, it's going to result in a change of attitude, and it's going to mm -hmm. result in a change of direction because we need to have godly sorrow. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, we live in a, in a tradition and an age where there is no godly sorrow, where, where it, is, it is quite frankly easy to be a Christian. It is easy to, to go to church and, and really don't have that conviction. Mm -hmm. I think when we have conviction, when we have uh, the spiritual conviction that I am a child of God, I am a son, a daughter of an almighty, then I, I will... It is important how I behave. I never want to offend the one that loves me, mm -hmm. right? And so because I have offended God, it's not, it's not just going to church. I, I think we've got to uh, break down this myth that it's not just about going to church and fulfilling an agenda, but rather having a relationship, exactly. a relationship that I do never, I, I never want to cause harm to the one that loves me, mm -hmm. to the lover of my soul. And whenever I do cause harm, that godly sorrow, according to Scripture, is going to result in repentance. Again, mm -hmm. a change of mind, a change of attitude, and a change of direction. Yeah. I pray that our people, I pray that God's people start coming back to that godly sorrow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorrow means um, a feeling almost of dread, a, a feeling of sorriness. I feel sorry. Mm -hmm. I feel humbled. I feel convicted. What would happen if every child of God had godly sorrow, had that type of conviction in their lives? Imagine that. Oof, a lot of things would be different. <clears throat> a lot of things, you know, a lot of people's attitudes would change. A lot of people's demeanor would change. A lot of actions wouldn't be the way they are in nowadays, you know. You can't just expect forgiveness and not ask for sorry, you know, even if I offend you, you know, like parent-wise, you know, your dad, you love your dad, but if you don't, do the things you were raised to do and you're doing the opposite, you know, it's, it's not showing the love, you know? So you have to ask for that forgiveness. You have to change your mindset and live by the word. You know, that's how you show your true love. Amen. You know, that's how you show your obedience, you know? And that's how repentance comes because, you know, any little falter, you feel that sadness like, oh, I, I messed up, you know? And I, 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 I'm, I feel sad because I let, you know, I hurt God. Amen. You know, I heard God and, you know, uh, he's done so much for me. I need to repent. You know, I need to repent and get back on track. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let me repeat that prayer line once again. 915-532-8518. We want to pray for you this morning. If you have a prayer request, if you need prayer, if you say, Pastor, this morning I need you to pray with me for repentance. I, I, I need godly sorrow. I want to get back in line with God. I want to get back in order with God. Would you call us, please? 915-532-8518 here at United with Christ. 
I want to speak about three evidence or the evidence of repentance. And what I discovered in the evidence of repentance is three things. Mm -hmm. The first one is whenever there is true repentance, again, within the context of repentance, a change of mind, a change of attitude, and a change of directions. There is an evidence of that. And the first one that I have found is that there is going to be a change in values. When we are truly repented, our values change. Now, how do our values change when we are repented? The, the Bible says that, that we are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. The Bible says that there is no communion between the darkness and the light, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. when, when, when my values change, it means that, that I have literally come from darkness into light. It means that my perspective, my views have changed. Mm -hmm. Why have, or how have my, have my views changed? Because I was in darkness. Mm -hmm. Imagine waking up at, nar at night and when you open up your, your eyes, all you see is shadows of what's there. Mm -hmm. But your perspective and your vision is altered. It is not, it is not what, what it could be. Mm -hmm. But now when you walk into the daylight, everything is different, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Your vision is clear. You see things clearly. And when you see things clearly, your values will change. Mm -hmm. Amen? When we are being led by the Spirit, our values will change. So I have found, Pastor, that the number one evidence of true repentance is where are your values? So I always ask people, show me your values and I can see your level of repentance. Because your values will always show how repented you are. Mm -hmm. The way in which you are seeing things mm -hmm. will change when we are in the lights, when we are in Christ, when we are filled by the Spirit, our values will change. Oh, yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything. It's like you say. Wow, that was great. How you're, it's, when you're living in darkness, everything is dark. But when you, live, when you come to Christ and Christ shines that light within you, you start seeing things in different. You start seeing the love. You start seeing everything that God explains to you through the word, you start seeing in life. And you start changing your weight of, I don't need to be angry at this person. You know, I don't need to hate this person. It's wrong to hate this person. You know, but when you're not living in the light, it's the anger overwhelms you and it controls you. Amen. You know, so you need to see things in different perspective. And that's the true repentance because <clears throat> you can tell by the way someone lives their life if they live in repentance or not, or if they're a loving Christ person, you know, because of the way they are with one another, their humbleness, their kindness, their, you know, the love that they have for each other is a different, because nowadays in this world, people don't have love for each other. Amen. You know, people, the opposite of the Bible is what they're living. You know, live for yourself, do your own thing, you know, um, love yourself, you know, and that's the opposite of the Bible. So your perspective changes when you come to Christ. You start realizing it's not about me, it's about Christ. Amen. You know, it's not about what I can do, it's about what I can do for him. And, and notice this, I behave according to my values. Mm -hmm. So my values are going to dictate my behavior, yeah. right? Because that's how I see things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to number two. Number two is... Not only is there a change of values with true repentance, but number two is there is a change in lifestyle. Lifestyle. This know. is this is good. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is not popular, but this is good. It's not popular to change your values. <coughs> and when we speak about true repentance will always lead me to a change in lifestyle. Why is this important? Because God has come. Uh, to give us life and life everlasting. Mm -hmm. Amen. There is a change. When we look at every character, at every personality in the Bible that came in contact with God, mm -hmm. that came in contact with Jesus, their lifestyles change. Yes. It, Peter comes to mind. Peter comes to mind this, this perhaps rugged individual, this, this type of individual that speaks later 
uh, speaks first and then thinks mm -hmm. type of individual. <laughs> I always tell people he, he may have been Hispanic because that's, that's how Hispanics are. We, we tend to speak and then think yeah. and then repeat, shoot and then ask questions later. Mm -hmm. That's a type of individual. That's how we are first introduced to Peter. And it is amazing how three years, three and a half years later, John and Peter are walking by and their shadows are healing people. What a mm -hmm. change of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. He went from being a true merchant, a true fisherman, and Christ calls him, now you will be a fisher of men. Your lifestyle is going to change. Another one that comes uh, to mind is, is Saul of Tarsus. When he had an encounter with God, his complete lifestyle changed from being one that was a pursuer and, a, and a, 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 somebody who would kill the church mm -hmm. to belong to the church. So nobody that has a true relationship with God, nobody that has a true encounter with Jesus keeps the same lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I say this, Pastor, and, and I would like for you to uh, give me your, your opinion on this. I say this. It is, it is very true what they say. God loves you. God accepts you just where you are and how you are. There, there is how God accepts you, and that is how God embraces you. Mm -hmm. But I, I add something else to that, and I say this. But God's purpose is not to leave you where he found you. Exactly. Amen? Amen. He will love you, embrace you, how you are, where you are, and it doesn't matter what you've gone through. There is where God will embrace you. But God's purpose is not to leave you where he found you. No. He will change you and he will transform you by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so that's why th the, uh, the point number two is there is a change in lifestyle. Yes. Before I know it, I am surrounded by Christ. I am so Christ-centered and so Spirit-filled that my life has changed. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. That is so true. That is true. You know, you are one person, but when you accept Christ... Christ embraces you as you are, like you said. But his plan is not to keep you where you are. You know, Ephesians 4.22 tells us to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceit desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put your new self and create it after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So when we, when we accept Christ and we go to Christ, our lifestyle completely changes. We are no longer our old self. And God tells us, put away your old self and follow me and become a new person and change your whole demeanor, change your whole lifestyle. It's like Peter. Peter was an angry person, you know, angry, always angry. But when he came to Christ, Christ, he changed his shadows were healing people, like you said. And that's, that's something that God has a purpose for each and every one of us. And our life is going to change. We are no longer going to be our old self. We're going to be renewed in Christ and continue in the plan and the purpose he has for us. You know, and everything about us is going to change. People are going to recognize, not going to even recognize you. Matter of fact, they're going to be like, man, you're, I remember you used to be an angry person. Now you're just so happy. You know, I remember you hated the world and now you love the world. Now, now you love each person. And I remember you hated everybody because no. Christ lives in you. Christ is within you and you live for Christ. You're no longer yourself, but Christ lives in you. You know, so your whole lifestyle is going to change. Your lifestyle, the way you walk, talk, eat, you know, Amen. the way you greet people, the way you, you know, everything in your lifestyle is going to change when you accept Christ in your life. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing because we want to walk like Christ. We don't want to walk away from him. We don't want to walk like this world. We want to walk like Christ. So change of lifestyle, and that's hard for a lot of people. Yes, absolutely. That is hard absolutely. for a lot of people to change the way they are because they've been that person for so long. That it, it's not the same. They don't want to change, you know. But when they got Christ, Christ moves them to a position where it's not that they don't want to. It's that they're following Christ. Amen. You know, so your lifestyle is going to change for the good. And many people want to continue to hold you in your old man. Yes, exactly. And then it, it, when, when you are being transformed and changed by the Spirit and, and your life is changing, your lifestyle is changing, uh, people sometimes want to hold you back. Oh, yeah. And they want to see you as the old man <laughs> while God is doing something in you. Yes, and exactly. that leads me to this uh, next point. This point number three and our last point this morning is not only is there a change of values when there's true repentance, not only is there a change in lifestyle when there's true repentance, but number three and finally, there is a change in relationships. 
And yes. how important is it <clears throat> to have a change of relationships when there is true repentance? Here, here is, is a fact that when the prodigal son was coming back home, one of the things that got changed in him were his sandals, what was his footwear. You know why? Because those feet knew the way back to sin. And so the reason why mm. it, it's so important to change those, th that footwear is because now your direction needs to change. Yes. Amen. And so now you cannot be surrounded mm -hmm. by the darkness. We go back to that scripture and what we said earlier. There is no communion between light and darkness, between darkness and light. They, they, they don't have communion, mm. right? And so the reality is that there has to be a change in relationships. Yes. So this is why repentance is hard, because there is a change of values, there is a change in lifestyle, and there is a change in relationships, mm -hmm. and that is really hard. In other words, what, what true godly repentance is, it's changing all of my nature. Everything completely. It's changing everything that I am, my values, my lifestyle, and my relationship, all for the sake of the cross. Mm -hmm. Will you give me your final thoughts on that, please? You know, that, that's, that's a very touchy subject because a lot of people get stuck on the second part. You know, they come and repent, but they don't change their lifestyles. They don't change their ways. They don't change their direction, you know. And there's people that are stuck on the first part, that their values, they still seem to stick with the old values, you know. And that's, that's it's an amazing, when you understand the true meaning of repentance, your whole life does change. And your relationships must change yeah. because you don't want people to bring you back to the old ways. You don't want people to put on the different sandals and bring you back to sin. You want them to keep you in with Christ. Amen. Amen. And these last couple of minutes, if you would allow me to pray for you before we leave, there, there, wherever you are at and you are connecting with us, let us pray. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, oh God, I pray for anybody that is coming in contact with this transmission, anybody, Father, that needs to repent right now, that is giving their lives to you right now, that is asking for forgiveness right now, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray for every person that is listening right now. I, I believe that God brought this so that you can be changed and that you can be transformed. Before we leave, as, as it is our custom, mm -hmm. I would like to bless you in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. Till next time, I'll see you again. This is Pastor Juan Felix from House of Purpose Church. It has been a pleasure seeing you this morning. I will see you again soon. God bless you.